Well, folks, I am down at the Dale River Ranch with my good buddy, Randy Douglas. We're on a bow hunt. Hi, folks, it's your old buddy, Luke Clayton. What do you say we have a little segment on campfire cooking? Now, right over there, I've got a campfire going in the embers. In the studios of Double Nickel Taxidermy and Hunting Seed. Welcome to A Sportsman's Life. We're so glad you tuned in to join us for another exciting real-world outdoor adventure right here on A Sportsman's Life. Well, folks, I am down at the Dale River Ranch with my good buddy Randy Douglas. We're on a bow hunt. Uh, and Randy, you know what? I don't care if we kill a turkey. Turkey would be good because yeah. if you price turkeys at the store lately, <laughs> about a dollar twenty a pound. I think one of these wild Rio Grande turkeys or a doe yeah. or a great big buck. Yeah, you never know what we're going to see. So they're here. So. They're here, folks. We're going to go and uh, I, I guess we're going to hunt out of a blind. Yeah, over a feeder. And honestly, there have been lots of turkeys and there's been some good bucks come in there and does. Yeah. So we'll just see what happens. Uh, just some a meat hunt. A right? meat hunt or something yeah, with, well, a, you never with a rack as wide as this. We don't care. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, stick with us. We're going to head to a blind and uh, see what we do. So hang with us.
That's how that's done. Thanksgiving turkey. Now let's try to get it here. Yeah. result of our bow hunt here. Randy, this is, if I'm not mistaken, this is the seventh or eighth turkey I've ever killed with a bow. Yeah. And I've been after him a long time, but this is going to make a good Thanksgiving dinner, folks. Don't yeah. you think? Yeah. Nice young Tom. It's, you bet. Yeah. It's probably about, I don't know, 12 pounds, something yeah. like that. Uh, the shot, you know, folks, you saw the buck come in and we had put out, we sprayed down with, uh, uh, TRHP, the scent guardian heavy because the wind shifted on us. Yeah, it was blowing out of the south and then it just turned right out of the north and that kind of, I, I was really afraid it was going to kill us, but that's right. Turned and out it didn't. It, and it the buck, great. Yeah, oh, the buck walked right by us and never <laughs> even smelled us. And, yeah, he did. Uh, it stayed there a while too, but <clears throat> Randy had the idea because of, of the wind, yeah. put out some of the, the, the TRHP. Scrape King. The Scrape King, yeah. And that was a good idea because yeah. I'm sure that buck never, he, you know. No, he, he just was smelling deer, I think. His body know. language was. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was a fun deal. Uh, yeah, Dale was, River Ranch, you know, I mean, DaleRiverRanch.com, folks. Uh, right on the Brazos, this is uh, Charlie Goodnight, in Oliver Loving Country. That's right. The cattle drives were right up in here where they started. Uh, Lonesome Dove would have you believe it was all in South Texas, but right here, well, actually, Oliver Loving over here in, in Weatherford. Well, Weatherford, that's where he's buried. That's where he's buried. I've been to the gravesite. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, I'm so happy to get a nice, nice uh, gobbler, especially a young one for, for eating. Yep, he's going to be good. He's going to be some good vittle. So, Randy, it was a good time like always, buddy. We've been hunting yeah. together for 10 or 12 years, man, just... Always a good time up here with Randy. If you're looking for a good place to hunt, Randy does have day hunts. Yeah. Not what you might think of a day hunt. It's not crowded up, and Randy's no, on his place every day uh, scouting, and he kind of knows yeah. where the game is. So, Randy, thanks, buddy. Oh, my pleasure, Luca. Look, we had a good time. We'll get that. We'll get that uh, Air Force Air Guns big bore up here and see yeah. what we can. We'll get some venison next time. How about All righty. Brought to you by Dallas Safari Club, conservation, education, and hunter advocacy. Hornaday, accurate, deadly, dependable. Taurus Firearms, maker of the Raging Hunter. Hi folks, it's your old buddy Luke Clayton. What do you say we have a little segment on campfire cooking now? Right over there, I've got a campfire going and the embers are getting right to make some shepherd's pie. So let's jump right into the shepherd's pie. It's real easy, I think a lot of people actually uh, make too big a deal out of this cooking over wood. It's, it's really simple. The, the main thing you have to remember, you don't have a knob to turn like a dial on a stove. You have to shift your wood around and get it the right temperature. So let's make us some good old shepherd's pie, which is a, a great camp dish, by the way. Well, friends, for shepherd's pie, you obviously need some mashed potatoes. I, you probably don't need to watch me make mashed potatoes. Make you some mashed potatoes, salt and pepper them to your to your taste. I like to add a little garlic powder, maybe a little onion powder, because remember this is going to be the crust or the top to your shepherd's pie once it spends about 20 minutes in that in that Dutch kettle. So mashed potatoes, a key ingredient, you need to get those ready before you start cooking your shepherd's pie. Okay Fred, you see how easy this Dutch kettle cooking is? Really there's not a lot to it. You might notice I've got a little south wind right now. Most of that heat is going over to the side of the fire. So just scoot your pot over. It'd be just like on an oven or, you know, a stove in the house, cut your heat down. Except on a cooking over wood fire, you don't have a, you don't have a dial to turn. But our, our uh, pork, it's really lean pork. It's uh, well done. The onions are translucent. Now the next thing we're gonna do is add the vegetables. You know, uh, carrots, 
you can put whatever you peas in there, beans, any kind of vegetables that you like, and you can cook them on the side. But since we've got a one pot meal, I don't like to mess up a lot of a lot of different pots or utensils when I'm cooking out on the campfire. What we're going to do is put our vegetables right in here with this meat that's already done. So let's do that, and then we'll take a look. Folks, here's our vegetables. You can just chop up whatever type of vegetables you like. Some of these are fresh and some are out of a can. Now, you need to thicken it up just a little bit. We're gonna put a little bit of, probably two or three tablespoons of flour in there. And as everything, when you add things, you stir it. You wanna stir that flour. That'll kind of bind it together, thicken it up a little bit. I think we need a little bit more flour, so let's, let's add a little bit more. There, now then. So we'll thicken this up. These vegetables are almost done. And pretty soon we'll be ready to put our mashed potato topping on this. Well friends, our vegetables are done in with the meat. We're just about ready to put our topping of mashed potatoes on. If you look at our, our embers, our coals, they are just, the timing is perfect. They're gonna be ready to put on top of that Dutch kettle in just a second. So let's put our topping on Okay, that. friends, mashed potatoes are ready to go. It gets pretty simple from here out. Take, our, take your mashed potatoes. Now down here, we've got our vegetables and meat all cooked down. I mean, that's good to eat just like that. But let's put our mashed potatoes over, just make a few little piles of them and we're gonna smooth these out. So you got seasoned mashed potatoes on top of your shepherd's pie. Now let me get over here and let's, let's start see, kind of leveling these out. Not rocket science, just kind of smooth everything out. I'm just using a basic old spatula. So it's all smoothed out like that. I like to make a few ridges in it. Just kind of ruffle the top up a little bit. Kind of make, I don't know, makes it look a little better when it cooks. Now, we've got our coals over there ready. Give you a good look here. Pretty simple. Let me smooth it up a little bit since we're on, since I'm showing all of you my best, <laughs> one of my best recipes. Smooth that up. Kind of push it down on the sides. That's it. I mean, at count, shepherd's pie, pretty tasty. Now, let's put these coals on top and mostly on top. We The bottom underneath here is already cooked, all the ingredients, but the top, we want to brown those uh, mashed potatoes. So let's put some coals on it and get it going. Well, friends, I set the the Dutch kettle down on the ground and I've got a circle of coals around it and under it but the majority of the coals are on top because like I say we want to bake that from the top down so give it about 20 minutes max and I think we will have some finished shepherd's pie okay I've been testing by smell it's been cooking about 25 minutes you probably laugh when you say testing by smell rather than timing it I can tell that steam coming out that those potatoes are just about golden brown on top. I'm gonna to give it two more minutes, then we're gonna pop the top on this thing and look at the finished product. Well, folks, here is the finished product, our shepherd's pie. You can see it's a golden brown on top. We're gonna to break into this and, and spoon out a little bit in a minute, but we had some, actually I had some mashed potatoes left over. I could not resist some, what we used to call potato patties when I was a kid. But this is some cheddar cheese mixed with the, the mashed potatoes, basically a little extra garlic, some salt and pepper. And I roll these in, in uh, egg, beat up a couple of eggs, roll them in that, and then put some flour on them and fried them. Potato patties, they go pretty dang well with the, uh, with the shepherd's pie. So let's cut into this pie and see what it looks like. We might even have to eat a little bit of it right now while it's good and hot. Let's see here. See that topping of potato there? 
There's those vegetables down in there. Oh yeah, folks. What I'm talking about, it's time for old Luke to have a little lunch. I wish you were here with me. A Sportsman's Life is also brought to you by Air Force Air Guns, B&B Charcoal, Pyramid Air, Sightmark, Snap Block Hunting Blinds, Smoke and Tex, Striper Express, TRHP Outdoors, and Ultramatic Feeders. In the studios of Double Nickel Taxidermy and hunting season here in Texas are wide open. John, you've been taking in heads now for a little while. What does yeah. the season look like so far? It's been really good so far this year. The, the deer, I think, have had plenty to eat this, this year. We've been blessed with grains and uh, as far as quality, looking really good. The numbers are good. Um, starting to cool off and feel like deer season finally. <laughs> but, finally uh, is right. But no, it's, it's going really well. Have you seen very many of them like this big one right here so far? A few, yeah, yeah. A lot of times people will go shoot those big ones uh, early on before they start fighting and, and busting their busting their antlers. And, and uh, so we get a lot of those big, high fence, typically deer that that uh, just impressive. Well, it does look like a good year, but it's been a good year for something else too. You have been working yeah. on a book for a while. We've talked about it a little <laughs> bit on my on my podcast on the VSC's campfires. And uh, now I understand it is ready. Is that right? It is finally. Finally, yes, yes. Here it is. We uh, took about six months. I had no idea what I was doing or getting into, but uh, now that it's done, um, it's been really neat to, to see people's reaction to it and uh, read through it, and and um, it's just been fun to be able to share our experiences here and, and my experiences and. and hopefully pass that on to other people interested in taxidermy. Well, I know there's taxidermy information in there, but there's also a few other things there, in there as well. There too. is. We tried to cover a little bit of everything. There's some humor in there, some stories that only a taxidermist could tell uh, <laughs> from over the, the past decade, um, kind of how we've gotten to where we're at now. Um, some advice for people kind of dabbling at different levels of taxidermy. So tried to make it, it broad and uh, be uh, available for people in all aspects of life, whether you're into taxidermy, you hunt, or uh, you just want to try something new. Well, I'm going to pan around real yeah. quick just kind of show the, the, the working area back here. This is not the showroom. We'll try, we'll show the showroom from other time, but obviously a little bit of everything from Cape Buffalo to African lion to red stag to Audad sheep to big white tailed deer and a whole lot of other things in between. John, tell us how you can, what's the best way to get a copy of your book? Uh, you can get on our website, doublenickeltaxidermy.com. Uh, you can come by the, the studio here. We have copies available. You can find it on Amazon. Uh, just type in Taxidermy Life, John Wilson, and uh, it'll pull it up for you. Okay, but if they want to get a autographed copy, autograph they can do copy. so by going they, to what website? Our, our website here is doublenickeltaxidermy.com, all one word. And uh, you can log in there and, and find it there. And it's N-I-C-K-L-E. -E. Yeah, right. That's a long story <laughs> there on that one. <laughs> we'll do that one of these days. Yeah, yeah. John, thank you so very much. We'll be back with you here for too very long and see what everybody's brought in. Thank you. I was bow hunting on a damp fall afternoon and was entertained by two young whitetail bucks sparring off in a distance. Yep, the rut is on. My goal on this hunt was to put some venison in the freezer for the upcoming winter. I spotted an older seven point that I'd actually seen a few years in a row and decided if he came close enough, he would be my target buck and give me the venison I was looking for.
<clears throat> okay, folks. We got a Luminoc right over here, glowing, and a white belly off in a distance. Plenty of blood. <clears throat> no need to follow the trail because he is down. Wow. Excitement here at the Bucking Bass. Not the monster we were looking for, but a nice buck. A real nice, heavy old buck. Yeah, he's got some heavy horns. Holy cow. Look at that, folks. Nice, very nice buck. Tickled to death for having him. Look at how thick he is. Wow, very, very nice. All right, well, I guess we'll go back and haul him out and sweet hell, he's a nice buck. Beautiful, all right, folks. We wanna thank you for joining us here on this week's episode. Please join us right back here next week for another exciting adventure on a sportsman's life.